good Saturday morning, December 5th. Good morning. It is December 5th, Saturday morning. We have so many things to be thankful for. We have so many things to be grateful for. I am so grateful for you, and I'm so thankful for you. Just want you to know that. Um, we're going to be taking communion this morning at the end of the Bible study, so grab your elements, have everything ready, and we will be ready to go. Uh, let me just mention something. Something on my camera. No, it's worse. Let me just mention something that, um, now it's way worse. Yes, you did just see me lick my thumb and clean my iPad camera. working on that. Here we go. Worse. Much worse. Hold on. Let me grab a tissue. This morning, we are going to be taking communion, and we are going to finish Proverbs 11. So, there we go. So, uh, get your Bible and turn to Proverbs 11. We're going to be finishing Proverbs 11 today. You're going to hear some work because... The workers are down at the bottom of my steps replacing some boards, and uh, uh, I'm just so thankful that I have patience and that uh, this too shall pass. It's almost over. They're almost finished. Isn't that good news? I asked one of the guys yesterday, I said, do you think you guys are being finished by Christmas? And he was like, yeah, we're going to be finished by Christmas. Yeah, we're going to be finished. We're almost finished now, but... So, um, grab your communion, grab your things, and yes, I am sitting right here on my back porch. It's a little bit chilly. I have on a sweater, but it feels awesome. It's awesome today. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to gather in your presence, to be with these friends, these good loved ones. Lord, I thank you that you are continuing to meet with us every morning every afternoon, every night, Lord, that we can stand in your presence and know your power and know the fulfillment of your love in our lives. Now, Lord, this morning, I pray if there are any who are sick this morning, any who are hurting this morning, Lord, that you would touch them, that you would heal them, that you would go into their bodies and manifest your healing power in their bodies. I pray this morning for those who are sad or those who are discouraged. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them today, that you would lift up their heads today, that you would remind them that they are yours and they belong to you and that they are a part of the kingdom of God. I thank you, Father, for all of our families and for all of our spouses. And I thank you for our homes and I thank you for our lives today, Lord. I thank you today, Lord, that we can come to you with our petitions in Christ's name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, so uh, we're going to look today at Proverbs 11. And yesterday we read, we ended with, be sure of this. The wicked will not go unpunished. The wicked will not go unpunished. But those who are righteous, they will go free. I just had a good feeling about that verse all day yesterday. About, yes, the wicked, they're going to be punished. And and, uh, you know, we've, we've talked before so many times about staying in our own lane and worrying about ourselves and reaching out to others as we need to, as God tells us to. But we also need to know that there are some people who, who are just going to reject God. They're going to reject you. They're going to reject the Jesus that is in you. We're going to pray for them. We're going to believe for them. But we're going to be glorifying glorifying in the name of Jesus that the righteous, they're going to go free. Eternal life. Eternal freedom. Salvation. Glory to God. Glory to God. The next verse in Proverbs 11, 22 is so powerful. And I'm going to tell you, we probably all should write this down. Because in the age of all of these selfies, and I've never seen so many pictures of women with duck lips. I don't get that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't get the duck lips or the pouty mouth 
thing. Um, I, I guess it's just a thing, but here's what I'm going to say about that. The Bible says in Proverbs 11:22, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. A beautiful woman who shows no discretion. In other words, her beauty is wasted as it would be if you put a gold ring through a pig's snout. A gold ring through a pig's snout would be ridiculous. She would say, oh my gosh. I mean, that even goes beyond being bougie. If you had a, if you had a real... If you had a pet pig, and I know some people do, if you had a, this pet pig, and I'm not talking about, you know, um, Charlotte, I'm talking about a pet pig that lived in your house, that lived in your house, and, and so, you know, everybody gets to have what they want. I mean, the heart wants what the heart wants, I guess, but you wouldn't put a gold ring in it, and when, when Solomon was writing this, nobody had a pet pig. First of all, to the Jewish people, and Solomon, of course, was Jewish, just the idea of having a, a pig, just having a pig. Remember that when the prodigal son uh, in Matthew, I think, went down, and he was at his very, very, very lowest, that's when he went and he ate with the pigs. He ate out of the pig's trough, and so he was living with the pigs, and that was not just how low can you go? It was beyond how low you can go because he was living with unclean animals. This is saying a woman, a beautiful woman who has no discretion, she is as useless, useless and as foolish as putting a gold ring in the nose of a pig. I never want to be that way. Someone with no discretion Someone who's just going after everything. Someone who is so selfish. Someone who shows no care, no kindness, no love, no discretion. They're just out living however they want to. And let me tell you something. This goes for beautiful men too. A beautiful woman. A beautiful man. Who has no discretion. It's That's useless. Their beauty is wasted. So let's see what so Proverbs 11, 23 says, The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. Now, we've talked about uh, the, the wicked have hope, but their hope is in foolish things. Their hope is in money. Their hope is in property. Their hope is in uh, material things. But this is saying the righteous, their desires, it's going to end in good. It's going to end in good. Because if you are righteous and you are seeking God for the desires of your heart, he's going to give you good things. He's going to give you good things. If you are righteous and you are saying to God, uh, God, you know what? Uh, I want to I want to have a couple of more husbands. That's not the desire of God's heart for you. He's not putting that desire in your heart. He's not. He's not. Or if the desire of your heart is somebody else's wife, that's not of God. This is saying, God will give you the desires of your heart. Because if you are a righteous person, you've prayed about it. You've come before him with, with you know, asking, God, is this a good thing for me? You know, if you've been offered a new job and you go to him and you say, God, is this a good thing for me? And it is, and he he says, you know, yes. Well, then it's only going to end in good. I I know a, a wonderful person who really, really wanted to marry somebody. And she had prayed about it and really didn't have a firm answer, which sometimes means no. So she asked her mom and dad to pray about it, and they also said no. Absolutely not. That is not the person for you. And so this person put out a fleece and said, if he shows up here at my house on, if he gets off from work early <clears throat> and he shows up here at my house at a certain time, she said this to her mother. This is a true story. She said, 
then will you believe that it's the right man for me? And her mother said, we're going to pray about it. And if, if you do all of those things, and of course do not tell him what's going on, but if you don't even say to him, I want you to come over Saturday at such and such a clock, then we will accept that God is speaking to you. And so the young woman decided she would call the boyfriend. And she told him, you really need to be here at the house Saturday at 5 o'clock. And he showed up. And they got married. And it was a disaster. From the first, a disaster. You see, you cannot play around with what God wants for your life. And you cannot play around with what God does not want for your life. And all of us have been in situations where we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, that has no business being in my life. I should not ask God for that. God, God's desire is to heal you. God's desire is to save you. God's desire is to fill you. And then God's desire is for you to walk in humility and to love him all the days of your life. The desires of the heart of the righteous can only end in good because he has ordained it. But the hope of the wicked, because they do not put their hope in God, they put their hope in things. They put their hope in themselves. It says it's only going to end in wrath. So today, I guess the question in Proverbs uh, eleven twenty three is, where is your hope? Where is your hope? Where is your desire? Where is your faith? Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty four. One man gives freely and gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Poverty. Wow. So, you give, and you give freely. You give joyfully. And God, what does he do with it? He brings it back into your lap. He presses it down and meshes it down and then just lets it just overflow. Overflow into your life. Because you're doing what God has asked you to do. You're giving freely. You're not giving grudgingly. You know, grudgingly. Every time uh, you pay your tithe, you're not saying, I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm doing this because my husband thinks we should pay our tithes, but I don't want to do it. That's grudgingly. But man, when we come into his presence and we give willingly and we give joyfully and we give gladly and we give sacrificially and we give above and beyond what is required of us, it says it's going to come right back into you. It's going to, you're going to gain even more. But the one who withholds, wow, what a mess. It says they're going to come to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. I've got this circle. I've got arrows drawn to it. I've, if I knew how to draw fireworks, I would do fireworks because this is absolutely the truth. The truth. The one who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. We know that. We know that's the truth. Let's say that you wake up this morning and you feel really bad. And uh, you give somebody a call and you say, I just want you to know I love you. I'm lifting you up. I'm believing, you know, with you. And, and <clears throat> you know, you're really refreshing them. <clears throat> and then a few minutes later, somebody calls you. And they say, you know, I woke up this morning praying for you. He who refreshes others, he who gives to others, he who gives benefits to others, he who blesses others, he who uh, comes into the presence of others and he's blessing them and he's thanking them and he's helping them to rejoice. He, th they're being refreshed. They're being refreshed. He who refreshes others, will he himself be refreshed? I don't know about you, but there have been days during this pandemic I needed to be refreshed. 
I needed to be refreshed. You hear the wind blowing behind me? Oh, blew the door open. He himself will be refreshed. I want to be that girl. I want to be that person who is able to refresh others, and then I just know that refreshing will come back on me. All right. Then it says in Proverbs 11, 26, people curse the man who hoards grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. Did anybody hoard toilet paper at the first of the pandemic? Or maybe you still are. Maybe you still are. Anybody who hoards anything knows what that is like. And, and probably we've all done it. I'm not sure. I've always been amazed that it was certainly during the pandemic, but then also if they even think there's going to be snow here in this area. And listen, guys, I live in Maryland. We're, we see a lot of snow. It's not like we don't see snow. Well, then immediately three things to pull out. Milk toilet paper, and bottles of water. I don't know, oh, and bread, and bread, and bread. I don't know how many sandwiches you think you're going to eat, but they start hoarding up bread. I'm going to admit that when the pandemic started and it became obvious that toilet paper was going to be, uh, you know, a real commodity on the open market, I, I went and I got some extra. I didn't get stacks, but I did get some extra. This is saying people are going to curse the man who hoards grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell or to share. Proverbs eleven twenty seven: He who seeks good finds goodwill, but evil comes to him who searches for it. Now, let me ask you this question: What are you searching for today? Let me shut the door because that's going to be loud. Hold on one second. It's kind of like living in a dentist's office right now, that drill. <clears throat> All right, so then it says, he who seeks, uh, who seeks good finds goodwill, but evil comes to him who searches for it. Have you ever known somebody who just went out looking for trouble, who just went out looking for how many ways they could uh, be evil, how many ways they could uh, commit adultery, how many ways they could go out and... Uh, get into trouble. I, I'm talking about people who are really seeking out and searching out trouble, evil, wickedness. But those who are out searching for good, they're going to find goodwill. They're going to find it. When you're trying to find something good, uh, Steve's granddad, Brother Woodard, um, he, w he was the best person I've ever met to find the good in something. Uh, Steve used to say that if that if his granddad were to drive by a dog, a dead dog on the side of the road that was mangled, that granddad would probably say, oh, but look at its beautiful teeth. I mean, he just was able to find the good. And you know what? When you're looking for the good, you're gonna find good. When you're looking for evil, you're gonna find evil. There's plenty of good out there to be found, and there's also plenty of evil out there to be found. So what are you looking for today? What are we looking for today? All right, then it says in Proverbs 11, 28, whoever trusts in his witches, uh, witches, in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. I've got arrows pointing up to righteous will thrive thrive. The righteous will thrive. Whoever is trusting in their riches, in their money, in their own stuff, in themselves, they're going to fall. They're going to fall. They, they, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot prosper. They cannot. Because they're leaning to their own understanding. They're, they're depending on their own riches. But this is saying, but the righteous will flourish, will flourish like a leaf. The righteous will thrive, will thrive. You know, when you go beyond just living to thriving, 
Oh my goodness, you're thriving. And you know, Kaiser, that's their thing. You know, we want to make you thrive. We want to make you thrive. And God is saying, and this is so much better than Kaiser saying it, because God actually fulfills all of his promises. This is saying, God is saying, if you're righteous, you're going to thrive like a green leaf. Like a green leaf. Like a green leaf. This, um, this geranium that's right here over my shoulder, um, the leaves are still so beautiful and green, and, and the geranium itself has still got beautiful color. That's a real plant. That's not a, a artificial. I've got a wandering Jew here, but then this um, geranium that's over my shoulder. And you know why? Because that's such a deep, that's such a deep uh, pot that I have those in that even though it's been really cold and uh, uh, even though it's, <clears throat> you know, it's been, it's been cold here, bad weather here, but that, that plant is planted in a deep pot. It's in the sunshine. It's in a sheltered place because it's on my balcony and I've been watering it and it's still thriving. The little vine that's coming off of it is still beautiful and still thriving. When we allow our roots to go deep, when we allow God to nourish us, when we allow God to take care of us, when we allow the good things of God to be our life, then we're going to thrive, not just exist. You know, we've we've all met we've all met these people who are who are old and they're fussy and yeah, they're still alive, but you know, honestly, they're miserable, and they make everybody around them miserable, and they're fussy, and they're grumpy. but then we've also met these wonderful people who are in their 80s and 90s, and they're still encouraging. Steve's, uh, Steve's Aunt Aline is uh, in her late 80s, and she sends us a card every month and encourages us, and when we get together with her, she cannot keep her hands off Steve's and what she says, his sweet little face, and she loves on him, and she hugs him, and she talks about when he was little, how wonderful and beautiful he was, and she's just, she, you talk about somebody who refreshes you, she refreshes you, but not just Steve, she loves on me that way, she loves everybody she sees, she holds them, and, and she loves on them, and she encourages them, <clears throat> and it says, you know what? The righteous will thrive like a green leaf. And there she is. She is thriving. Her daughter, Avis, who lives with her, had a bad case of coronavirus. But Aline did not. God just put that hedge of protection around her as Avis had prayed that he would. And we all pray that he would. Because, you know, I'm talking about somebody in her late 80s, little tiny thing. She's thriving. She's thriving. And that's what I want to be. That's how I want to live my life. Thriving like a green leaf. He who brings trouble on his family will inherit only the wind. And the fool will be servant to the wise. The fool will be a servant to the wise. But look at Proverbs 11 and 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And, and, so this isn't one of those, but, this is an and. He who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. Wisdom. It is wisdom for us to be a soul winner. It is wisdom. Uh, and Proverbs 31, uh, Proverbs 11, 31. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner. This is good versus evil. Good versus evil. The righteous, I mean, this whole chapter has been, you know, I, I made my chart up. The whole chapter has been, here's what the righteous are going to get. Here's what the wicked are going to get. And if the righteous are going to get all of these benefits, deliverance, escape, salvation, help, uh, rescue, prosperity, uh, victory, 
uh, their city will be exalted. Honesty, wisdom, trustworthy, uh, being able to know and discernment. If, if we're going to receive all of those, those who are righteous, well, the same goes for the wicked. And what does it say the wicked are going to receive? They're going to receive um, that God detests them, unfaithful, destroyed, brought down by their wickedness, trapped by evil desires, trouble, wicked mouth. They perish. And when they die, it says there is victory when they're gone. There is celebration when they're gone. God wants us to live a righteous life. And nobody, nobody, nobody can say, but I don't know how to do that. Because, listen, God's word, it will tell you. It will outline it for you. Not if you skim through it. Not if you're just um, reading to get it read and finished. It's not an assignment that you read through so you can sign a piece of paper that says, yes, I read the Old Testament. Yes, I read the New Testament, which I had to do when I was at Lee we had to whatever teacher we had for Old Testament and for New Testament and Steve probably knows but I can't think of who it was um, we had to sign a paper at the end of that semester that said yes I read the Old Testament and yes I read the New Testament now I know I read it but I can tell you this for a fact I didn't study it I didn't consume it I didn't devour it I just read it I just read through it if I knew who that professor was, maybe I owe them an apology, but I read it, but I didn't consume it. I didn't let it go into my mind and into my body and into my spirit, into my attitude, into my character. God's word is a living thing. And he will reveal himself to you through his word. Memorizing scripture is so powerful. It's so powerful. Studying scripture is so powerful. That's why during this time of pandemic that I've not just survived, <clears throat> but I've begun to thrive because I'm studying God's word as I've never studied it before. I see changes in my life. I see changes. I see changes in my life. Today we are going to take, um, we're going to take communion this morning. What a beautiful morning to take communion. To come into common union with each other. I wish with all my heart, all my heart, that we were downstairs in my house and we were all taking communion together. Or we were all gathered together in the sanctuary, taking communion together. But you know what? That is the desire of my heart, and it's going to happen. But for right now, I'm rejoicing that through this technology, I can take communion with you. That I can take communion with people I haven't taken communion with in maybe decades. Maybe decades. Frida, I don't know the last time I've seen you in person. I don't. Jerry Mudd, I saw you last Sunday. And I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow morning. You see, there's such a wide range of fellowship through this vehicle. And I love it. I love it. So this morning, we're going to do the next best thing, which is take communion on Facebook. And we're going to join together and we're going to agree and we're going to come into common union we're going to come into agreement we're going to bring our lives into alignment with Jesus Christ and then we're going to stretch out our arms and be in alignment with one another God knows God hears God feels us and he changes us so if you would take your communion a wafer or cracker or piece of bread or whatever it is that you have and we're gonna hold this up and we're gonna believe and we're gonna know that as we take this into our body 
we are taking the body of Christ. We are taking his love. We are taking his gift. We are taking his healing. I'm praying this morning for Sally's back. I'm praying that God will heal her back. She's been going through a lot, and she needs, she needs healing in her body today. I'm going to be believing today for Maria Riley's husband. He's having trouble with his kidney. He has kidney disease. We're believing that God is going to heal. Frida, I'm believing with you for your knees. I'm believing that God is going to completely heal your knees. I am believing for family members who are unsaved. I am believing for fellow brothers and sisters who are going through a terrible storm. I am believing for healing for all those who have contracted COVID. I am believing that a miracle will take place and COVID will be away from our land and away from this world. I'm believing that and I'm trusting God for that. I'm believing for a miracle in this fight against COVID. So today, as you lift up your wafer, we're going to do this in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you today. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you would take the juice. The Bible says in Matthew that in like manner, after Jesus had handed out the bread and they had taken it, then he took the juice and he held it up. And he said, this represents my blood. This represents my blood that will be shed for you so that you can live that you can have abundant life and every time you sit down at the table every time you sit down to eat or to drink together remember me Father today we lift up this juice and we thank you for your blood that heals, that delivers, that saves that sets free that frees us in Christ's name, amen. I love you so much. I'm so grateful that God has given us this opportunity. I think, I'm so thankful that God has given us this opportunity to gather together in his name, that he's provided a way that we can come into communion with him. I love being in communion with you. And I'm also glad that I can come into communion with Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today. We praise your name. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray today that your deliverance, that your healing, that your salvation that your miracles, that your love would flow through us, that we could bring refreshing and deliverance in your name to others. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. I love you very much, very much. Tomorrow, we do not have... Uh, Bible study because it's Sunday. Tomorrow, Steve is preaching on preparing for your miracle. We've been talking about it. Uh, he's been sharing with me the scriptures he's going to use. I cannot wait to see when it's all put together. Um, I'm, I'm just super excited. This is the Christmas season. It's a time to be joyful. It's a time to come together if you possibly can. Be with us tomorrow morning in service at 9 o'clock. Worship starts at 8.50. You do not want to miss that. You do not. You do not want to miss that. Our praise team is ready. They're prayed up. You know, if Rosalind is in charge, 
they're going to be prayed up. But then look at the rest of that team. It's Beverly Mason, it's uh, Hannah Fro, it's Christina Brown, and Adia McNeil. And then our musicians. Listen, I'm not talking about professional <clears throat> musicians who are paid to come in and play. I'm talking about men of God who come in and fulfill their duty before the Lord in obedience to Him. But they've practiced and they've worked, and it's oh, it's it's a it's a glorious time. So join us tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. If you can't be there in person, you can join us by Zoom. If uh, you want to watch in your pajamas, um, shame on you. Get up out of that bed and come to church. Um, and so if you need, let me just say that. If you need to stay at home, if you need to stay at home, stay at home. Don't come to church sick. But if you need to stay at home, you can watch on Facebook Live. You can watch on YouTube or you can see NCOG Live. You're going to love it. We're going to have a good time together in the Lord. I can't wait. I can't wait. Today is Steve Cousin Pam's. Uh, it's her birthday today. I started to say what birthday it was, but maybe I won't do that. It's her birthday today, so I'm going to go downstairs when I can and make her uh, a little treat for her birthday. So, uh, oh, let me just say this. Uh, Angela Roberts and I think Betty Harris. I'm, I know Betty's on there. I'm pretty sure uh, Betty, give me a thumbs up if I'm right. I thought I saw you, but with a mask, it's so hard to tell who anybody is. But, uh, oh yeah, the dancers, the praise dancers will be there tomorrow. And um, also, Angela and Betty Harris have decorated our church for Christmas. And honestly, it is gorgeous. It's just breathtaking to enter into the lobby of our church and then to come into the sanctuary it is gorgeous in there. Beautiful, beautiful job. So job well done, ladies. I really appreciate them. All right. I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock in church and then Monday morning at 10 o'clock. I don't know where I'm going to be sitting, but I'm going to be waiting for you. God bless you. I love you much.